hello and welcome back to my channel where I like to have fun with all things beauty while being critical about what I accept into my collection. Today I am doing a best of makeup 2024. This is going to be all the makeup and some skincare outside of eyeshadow. <laughs> so eyeshadow is going to be a whole separate video. I'm going to do a palette ranking and show swatches and eye looks and all of that. And obviously for me eyeshadow is the biggest category. <laughs> That's what I have the most of. So that's going to be another video in another week or so, but today I'm going to go through everything else. So my top products in every other category. So quick disclaimer, I did just dye my hair. <laughs> it looks pretty awful and I'm distracted looking at it, but I am going to try to tone it. So hopefully you won't have to watch another video with it being this orange, but you know, you get what you pay for and I do my hair for free. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, I'm also under quite a time constraint. I have a ton of stuff happening this week, so I'm going to try to do this rapid fire. Starting with skincare. So nothing in my core skincare routine has changed. The past few months, I've been trying a lot of new things, so I don't have everything here in front of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up a picture of my favorite serums. Lots of things come and go, but these are the things that never really change. I have my Timeless Code Q10, my Timeless Sin 6, and my Manyo Bifida. My favorite hydrating serum of all time is the Chemist Confessions Aqua Fix. This is the thing that when I run out of it, like I hurt. <laughs> this is super soothing and I just, I, it's very enjoyable for very dry skin. I, I should say I have very, very dry skin, so everything in my routine is aimed at eliminating that. I'm on prescription tretinoin, so I don't really worry about any other actives. I have my tretinoin that has some panthenol and some other things mixed in. I also use something for hyperpigmentation right now. It's a mixture of azelaic acid, kojic, resveratrol, and CGCG. Those two items I get through agency. It used to be Curology, but then I moved to agency because they had more of the dark spot stuff. And my favorite moisturizers. So my favorite daytime moisturizer is the Pharmacy Honey Halo, but I don't buy it all the time because it's just like a little bit expensive. Sometimes instead I'll buy the Kopari, the Moisture Rip. A lot of times I've gotten this at 50% off at Ulta. It's just great. It's just easygoing, straightforward, plays well with everything. My favorite nighttime moisturizer is the Bioma Barrier Repair Treatment. I actually wear this during the day also. It just, it has a really nice finish on it and it has a texture that is super similar to some of the most high-end moisturizers that I've used. So I really like that one a lot. Exclusively at night, I top all of that with my Holy Grail Aven Zeracom Balm. I've tried the balm and the cream version. I really only like the balm version because it does dry down clear. And that is probably like if I lost all of my skincare other than my tretinoin, I would probably buy my Aven Zeracom first because it really feels like the one thing I can't live without. It is that hydrating and soothing. So I highly recommend that if you feel like you've tried everything and there are no nighttime moisturizers that are tenacious enough to last through the night and are soothing enough to be appropriate no matter what. Like I can use that after I, I've never had a real chemical peel, but an at-home chemical peel, face shaving, whatever I've done to my skin to irritate the crap out of it, that stuff is always soothing. It never burns and yeah, it's just my, my number one. And it's been like that for years now. For sunscreen, my favorite sunscreen for being outside is the P20 Kids. My favorite sunscreen for under makeup is the In Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. I am out of that right now. I have been using the APLB instead, but I think that I was going to say serving size. The fill size of that one is just a little bit on the light side. So I think from an economic perspective, when I repurchase, I'm definitely going to go with the Isn't Tree instead. It sits well under makeup. It plays well with everything. It's easygoing and it's hydrating. If you have dry skin, I would recommend that. If you have more oily skin, I think you have a lot more options, but I personally have tried a lot and that seems to be the one that is the easiest going on my extra dry skin. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to jump into makeup. <laughs> so my favorite primer, I'm just going to go in order of how I put my makeup on. 
So I don't really have a, pr a favorite primer right now, unfortunately. I've tried a lot. I was trying so hard to find a replacement for the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base because I love that, but I didn't feel that it was worth the high price tag. I just don't think there's anything in it that <laughs> makes it worth what they charge. So I've been trying the Embryo Lease. The Embryo Lease is all right. I don't hate it. It's what I have on today, but I just feel like I wish it was slightly more hydrating. I also like the Ritual Defeat face oil, but not all of my foundations really want to be on top of an oil. So I, I don't know. I guess I have to say the jury is still out. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt. But if I could pick any primer and money was no option, I would absolutely go back to Bobbi Brown in a heartbeat. My favorite lip primer is the Lawless Forget the Filler. I like the lip mask the best, but any version of this really I like. I find it enjoyable. It's not plumping per se, but I do feel like it is hydrating. My favorite eye base is a good old-fashioned MAC paint pot. <laughs> you know, these were 50% off at Macy's recently, I think, and I just, I really love this. I have it in Painterly, and it's easygoing. It's like somewhere in the middle. It's not super sticky and grippy, and it's not drying, so I feel like it's my easiest going. It stays on the lid better than a concealer, so sometimes I will just go ahead and use a concealer all over my eyelid and, you know, go over that with powder or something, and that works fine, but this is a little bit more opaque, so I don't know. I just, I do really like it. It cancels out all of the veins and the redness and the discoloration, and I do think that it helps with longevity, so that's my pick there. My favorite foundations, so I have two. I have the NARS Light Re reflecting and the Chanel number no. one. I like them both pretty equally. <laughs> you know, I have to say the NARS sort of beats it out just slightly because it's a little bit more hydrating. But for an event, I kind of feel like maybe the Chanel is a little bit more perfecting. I don't know. It's a little bit thinner. So sometimes I guess if I'm using powder or whatever, I can maybe see the NARS as being just tiny bit thicker, like a little bit more present on the skin, whereas the Chanel being thinner, slightly less emollient, ever so slightly less coverage, maybe, I don't know. It would be really hard for me to choose just one. <laughs> I wouldn't ever want to be without either of them. I kind of go through phases. Sometimes I'm using one more than the other, but I don't know. I mean, I guess if I was going to like a wedding or something this weekend, I would probably pick the Chanel unless it was somewhere really cold and I was worried about dry skin and then I would probably go with NARS. So it's a toss up. I love them both though. My favorite concealer, and this has been true for the past several years, is the Kosas and the Kulfi. I've been a broken record about these and all my Sephora recommendations and yada yada, but I, I really do love both of these. I guess if I had to pick one, I would stick with the Kosas because the Kulfi is ever so slightly more hydrating in a way that makes it a little bit reflective, whereas I feel like the Kosas is just as hydrating, but the finish is slightly more matte. So the real reason I don't just stick with the Kosas is the color. <laughs> I feel like Kosas in general pulls a little bit yellow on me. So the Kulfi just sort of helps balance that out. And I, I don't know. I just, I've been using this combination for a while now and I really love it. I have the Kosas in 2.3N and the Kulfi in Cocoa Crush. I should mention a runner up as the Natasha Denona concealer. I do really like that as well. I feel like when I wore them side by side, it's not even worth popping a picture up because you, you can't tell a difference. <laughs> even at the end of the day, Day, the difference was so imperceptible that I could only really detect it in person and I feel like the Natasha Denona creased slightly sooner but I mean it was pretty negligible so if anything I keep that one around because the color is better so I you know I like that concealer almost just as much there's something about it that makes it not quite holy grail status but it's a very close third eyebrows um the benefit pomade 
you know, this is certainly not a popular product, but it's fast. You know, I have very sparse brow hair. I have very sparse hair everywhere. <laughs> so I need like kind of a lot when it comes to my brows. And I just, this is the quickest, you know, I have very little patience when it comes to my brows. I used to use the Benefit Pencil. I did that for years and it got tedious. And I even went as far as trying the Tom Ford brow the gel with the fibers and the spoolie. And even that, I feel like I just need to be a little bit more careful with it. This, I just put a little bit in and I go through it with the spoolie and it takes like two seconds. And that's my kind of brow product. I guess when it comes to hair in general, I'm just not interested. <laughs> so my brows are no exception. I'm not interested in sitting there for an hour to try to make them look good. Throw this in and go and yeah, maybe it doesn't look the best, but my goal is for my brows not to be noticeable. It's never for them to like frame my face or do anything crazy. I just want them to not be distracting. <laughs> so that's been working for me. Contour. So my favorite contour is the Westman Atelier in Biscuit. I just, I love the color of this. I have been using this as my contour every single day since I got it. And I think I picked this up during one of the Sephora sales. I assume it was last spring. So I've been using it every day for six months and I still have plenty left. So, you know, I don't go crazy with contour. I really just put a little bit in my cheekbones, but I just think the color of this blends in so seamlessly with my skin tone. And, you know, for that reason, that and the formula is nice. It's never had an issue mixing or blending with powders or creams and... I just love it. I really, really like that contour. My favorite powder contour isn't really a contour. It's more of a bronzer contour. The Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. I love the color of this. If I didn't really have time to deal with a bronzer, I, I would absolutely just use this. I don't really care for the highlighter. It's kind of irrelevant, but <laughs> the bronzer is so good that I've bought three of these over the past several years. I just, it's very easy going. Another powder bronzer that I love, but I don't, I'm not totally sure it's worth the price is the Pat McGrath in Nude Honey. I got this as part of a set a few years ago for holiday, and I don't think the set is around anymore, but I do think she has Nude Honey on her website. I, last time I checked, it's not available at Sephora, so I, I don't really know what that means. I don't know if they're getting rid of the bronzers or whatever. What I like about this is it's just so easy to go on. The formula is similar to her powder blush formula, and that it's just like easy going. It's pigmented, but you're not likely to get in trouble with it. It's not likely going to be stampy, patchy, muddy, any of that. This was always something that I could just grab, throw on, and it would go with everything. It, it just was my fail-safe bronzer. I decided, because I'm not sure what's going on with that, to pick a number two. And I guess my number two is the Gucci in shade one, but this is for shade. What I really like about this is the shade. The formula is just all right. It's not my favorite formula. It's not the worst formula. It's just okay. It takes an extra second. Like I do think that this could be patchy or stampy. So I have to use a bigger brush. I think it works better with a natural hair brush. But when I do all of those things, it does look beautiful. Like I use this today and I, I like the color of it enough to sort of put up with a little bit finicky of a formula. But I think either one of those is great. My favorite cream bronzer is the Say Cream Bronzer. I don't you know, I've gotten out of the habit of using it. I just personally prefer the powders, but in the summertime especially, I do really like that as a cream bronzer. That's the sun melt. For blush, I think because blush has had its moment the past few years, it's been so popular and I've got totally sucked in and I bought like 150 blushes that I didn't need. But regardless, as a result, I had a hard time narrowing it down, so I decided to go in categories. So my favorite matte powder blush, that goes to the Pat McGrath in Flirtatious. I just, I love the color. It's a color thing for me, and like I said earlier, the formula is impeccable. I just, I absolutely 
love that blush. Anytime I don't know what's going to work with a look, that's the blush I go with because it's just so neutral and easygoing. My favorite glowy powder blush is the RMS blush. My favorite shade is Crystal Slipper. I actually have a little bit of this on today as well. It's just a really nice formula. It doesn't enhance texture like a lot of other glowy blushes. You know, I, I look at it as similar to the Hourglass blushes, but it's more impactful. I didn't choose any of the Hourglass blushes this go around because, I don't know, I mean, they're a good formula, but they don't really stand out in my mind, and, and this one did. So that's the winner there. My favorite liquid blush goes to the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Wand in Pillow Talk. This is color. I really love the color of this. There's just something about the undertone that makes it a little bit different. I, I compared it to like Petal from Westman Atelier because in my mind I thought they were very similar. But you can tell that this is just a little bit deeper and I don't know, it's unique and I really like it. And it goes with my skin tone. I think blush is mostly about skin tone. So take that with a grain of salt. But I do like the formula of that as well. And finally, for cream blushes. So I have a tie here. I got the Lawless for 50% off. I have the shade Angel. I got this 50% off during a GMA deal. And it was honestly, it was the only shade they had. So that's why I bought it. I, w I just wanted to try the formula. And I wound up loving the formula of this so much, I wore it every single day this summer. I swear, I just, I really never put it down because every time I wanted to do a blush, it was just the easiest <laughs> formula. It, the color went with everything. So part of me wants to say that it's a no-brainer, it's this blush, but there's something holding me back up, and I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is because when I compare it to, I got a, a few, I've always had a couple of the Westman Atelier minis, but I never really had the right color for me, but I always knew I loved the formula. So recently when I picked up the Westman Atelier mini in petal, I knew that was the right color for me and I just, I, I like this better. So I think if I had to only get to keep one of these two cream blushes, it would be the Westman Atelier. You know, I can definitely live without the Lawless. I haven't been using it once I bought all these new blushes. And for that reason, it, it doesn't win, but it gets an honorable mention. <laughs> I do like the formula, but I like the Westman Atelier better. For highlighters, I have two. I have the Fenty and Pretty Pearls. I picked this up when it first came out. I can't open it because it actually shattered. <laughs> it's very fragile, but it's just, it's a gorgeous highlighter. I do feel like I need to buff it in a little bit so it's not one that I can just grab, throw on, and I don't have to be careful with it. I, I do feel like I have to be a little strategic with it. So that is why I also have my Pat McGrath Labs, which this is my real favorite. This is the gel powder hybrid formula. Why I'm also mentioning the Fenty though is this was limited edition. So I have no way of knowing when this will be in stock. This is the shade Nude Opal, but I know this isn't the only one. And for me, it's a formula thing. So it's really just about this formula. I don't necessarily think it has to be this exact shade, but I just, I love the formula because it's so easy. I can throw it on my cheek without even checking in the mirror, run out the door, and I know I'm not going to have streaks. There's no cast. There's no nothing. This is just is absolutely my favorite, but I had to mention the Fenty because it's stunning. Like, it is a absolutely stunning highlighter, and if, you know, I had to replace my highlighter and I couldn't get my Pat McGrath, that's the first one I would buy. All right, now finally we have powder. So under my eyes, my favorite powder is the Hour glass dim light. I have it in this palette, but they sell minis. So I actually, I'm almost panned it in here. So I bought a mini in the Sephora sale that I'm going to use next. And my favorite all over face palette is a tie between the Givenchy and the Kosas. The Kosas Cloud Set, I have Airy. I've been using this for years. This has been my favorite face powder for such a long time. I was using it every day for like two years. I've been through several of them at this point. I don't really know what made me pick up my Givenchy recently, but probably around six months ago, for some reason, I just decided to use this instead, and I forgot how much I love the Givenchy. So I have to say it's a solid 
Thai. I have been meaning to try the new formula of the Givenchy. I haven't done it yet, but I have heard from some people with dry skin especially that they don't hate the reformulation that much. I am sort of holding out hope that they're going to do another reformulation <laughs> to make it more like the original. The original is the one that I have. So I plan on trying the new one before I recommend it. If I was giving someone a safer recommendation, though, I would say the Kosas because, you know, that formula hasn't changed and it was good enough for me to use it for like two years straight. So <laughs> they're both really good formulas. I will update about the Givenchy. So I, I don't know. I guess for now, Kosas is the real winner here. And finally, lips. So my favorite lipstick, probably two years going now, is the Charlotte Tilbury in Wedding Bell. That's my pillow talk. Her shade pillow talk is just a little bit too orangey on me. This just works better. It's a little bit more pinky mauve leaning. It's what I have on today. I just, I love the shade. It's easy going. It goes with everything. I don't have to think about it. My favorite lip gloss is new. This is the Giorgio Armani Prisma Glass in number seven. I think this is nude. It's nude something. I'll pop it up on the screen. But this is just gorgeous. This was a sleeper hit for me. I totally overlooked these when they first came out. It was like another lip gloss in a sea of lip gloss. <laughs> like I'm drowning in lip gloss at this point. But this really does stand out. It's super dimensional and it's just gorgeous. It also leans a little bit more pink. My problem with a lot of nude shades of lip stuff is that they always tend to wash me out. Like that whole nude lip, like a nude lip never looks good on me. It always looks awful. So I need something that's either totally translucent or has a pinky undertone. And this has a pinky undertone. So I was so happy to find this. I've tried so many lip products over the years and none of them have really gotten me to think they were remarkable until this came out. I mean, prior to this, my favorite was the Patrick Ta and She's Expensive. And <laughs> most of that was how it looked in the tube. I mean, I even said it when I talked about it as being my favorite lip gloss in the past. I was like, the formula is not great. It's like average. It's not awful. It's not like terrible. It doesn't dry my lips out, but it's not anything special either. And it doesn't really do much. The shimmer is impactful for like two minutes and then you can't even notice it anymore. So this is much different. This is like a well-rounded formula and I can endorse this and say this is a good purchase. It's not just something pretty to look at when you pull it out of your purse. So <laughs> this makes a lot more sense. I almost forgot Raining Champ for another year. My favorite setting spray is the MAC Fix Plus. I also like the Hourglass. I think that's a really nice mist. But this one is slightly more hydrating. So for that reason, this edges it out just a little bit. But you know, I like both. They're kind of tied. This is more economical. So this is a safer bet. And once again, this is a dry skin thing. You know, this doesn't, I don't think, make my makeup last any longer. But I'm not really needing that. I don't really expect super longevity out of my makeup. I just want to look nice and hydrated for like at least a few hours, you know. And the, the Fix Plus helps get me there. It helps melt everything together. If, I, if I've if i used a little bit too much powder or, you know, what, whatever's going on with my skin, especially if I'm using anything that is drying or is a problem this can sort of take care of it so that is it that is all of my favorites in my base product I hope I didn't forget anything and I hope you are having a fabulous day wherever you are I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one Bye bye